financial problems, elder law, criminal law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now, here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic is estate planning's role and managing debt issues with estate planning as well. Brian Small, good morning. Good morning, Ken. I can't wait to hear all about this show today. Jeffrey Kirshner. I'm equally as excited to talk about what I'm going to do when I'm not here. Jim Samasco. <laughs> it's one of my favorite subjects. Dying? <laughs> Planning for it. Planning for it. <laughs> Making it easier for the loved ones. Before we get to, the, to that aspect, I want to go back a couple of shows ago when we did debt management and you were saying about how people waste money in the grocery store. Oh, people flush it down. I just want to let you know something. I took, your, I took your advice to heart because I realized the next... Saturday, I was in the grocery store. Every Saturday, I buy ba a couple bags of lettuce and items for making a salad. A couple bags of garbage is what he bought. <laughs> in the anticipation buying. that maybe I'll make a salad that week. Because he only, was throwing it away. I only make that, we only decide to have the salad maybe one out of four times. And your advice was don't buy it then. Go to the grocery store that day if you want to make the salad. That's so I cut out interpretation. I it? cut out the two bags of lettuce, the cucumbers, the I think that's about it because I still buy the onion for other sandwiches and I still buy the tomatoes. But that still saved me probably eight nine dollars between the bags of lettuce. So now as a result of that, taking your advice, I saw my grocery bill basically go from what was one fifty per week when I was doing it, and now it's one sixty five. 150 to 160. So it still went up, but I don't know why, but I know that I'm saving the $10 that you told me about. So thank you. Yeah. I'll tell you why it went up. It's because you didn't shop from a list. You When you walk back into the grocery store, you're buying other things that you didn't intend to buy when you walked through the grocery store. That would be true about many people, but you should know me well enough to know that I tend to be somewhat regimented in my methodology and behavior. Shocking. Ken Gross <laughs> regimented. I do not, Who would ever believe I that? I do not need a list. I buy the exact same things every week. Well, I'll tell you why it went up, because the price of food has gone through the roof. That's why it went up. And right. I mean, the, the best explanation is, is I was talking to a friend of mine that's in the restaurant business. About a year and a half ago, do you know what a case of chicken wings used to cost? No. Sixteen dollars. Now? Hundred and twenty-five. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. They must be really good chicken wings. No, they're the same type of chicken wings. That's the problem. I mean, I, I you, you did make me more aware of what it's doing. I, I realize there are three things that I spend in the grocery store that are very expensive. I buy a frozen macaroni and cheese, which I have for lunch every day, that costs $6 per shot. So that's basically $30 a week for that lunch. Is your I doctor buy, listening to this? Macaroni and cheese I buy every day. Tuna. <laughs> did you, did you get your estate plan done yet? Because <laughs> tuna at the deli that is delicious, but that tuna runs $18 for a container. And that, and then the third one is, I can't remember. Oh, the third one is I buy turkey, which my dog loves, which I feed, and I make a couple sandwiches over the counter at the deli. And that went from basically nine dollars to sixteen dollars in the increase. So you take the turkey, the macaroni and cheese, and the tuna, and that's basically half of my grocery bill. So everybody that wants to, like, think about this for a second. Ken's been living in the same house for over 30 years. The instructions on his stove are still in them right now because it's never <laughs> been used. Well, that's not true. I've used the top stove, but the bottom, one, stuff. The bottom one is for storage. Anyway, but, but there is a point. 
The point is you, have ra you raised my level of consciousness about what I'm spending. So now even though I haven't decided to cut out the mac and cheese, the turkey, or the tuna, I'm thinking about it because I'm now aware that that's half of my grocery budget and I'm spending a lot of money for those items mm -hmm. and, and, and I recognize that. I also noticed that you know you can go and buy like chicken fillets that you go and grill on, on the grill and have a nice chicken dinner for what really costs you about twelve dollars to feed a family of two whereas if you go out to eat and get that it's going to cost you thirty five to forty dollars. Ah, you just put your finger right on it. So it's, eating at home is cheaper. Eating at home is always cheaper. Yeah. All right, let's talk about estate plan. All right, we're going to talk about three areas today. Why you need an estate plan, basic elements of a plan, and how you coordinate estate planning with debt issues. So, what, guys, why do we need an estate plan? Because nobody's getting out of this alive. To make it easier for your family when something bad happens. Oh, well, that sounds so nice, but none well, of us are getting out of this alive. That's true. But you don't want to be a burden to your family or your children. That, 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 that's very true because we see it all the time where people don't do the estate planning. Someone then passes away and it adds to the chaos. And nobody, the death process is not enjoyable anyway, but you're throwing salt in the wound when there's no estate plan and you create havoc. Right. You've got to probate the estate. You've got to do that's all these it, things. That's it right there. Mom passes away. She didn't have a trust set up, she owned a house, and suddenly, instead of being able to instantly sell the house or do whatever you needed to do with it, they've got to open up a probate estate, take eight months to get this stuff taken care of. Not that just process. that, but you want to be certain that whatever your assets are, whatever you have, go to whom you want it. That's a very important thing. Another thing, and I'm sure Jim could talk about this, is any tax consequences. They can certainly protect the family from a lot of tax consequences. Right, but the worst thing is, is mom doesn't die, but mom's disabled. Mom can't take care of herself, and you don't have the tools in place. Then you need the nursing home. Then you need the nursing homes, you need the guardianships, you need the conservatorships, and the cost of that can be overwhelming. Not, a, not to mention the emotional strain on the family taking care of that parent. And you can save that expense with one key document, can't you? Yes, well, a set of key documents. The, the patient advocate, the power of attorney, the putting uh, the tools in place so when a loved one does get sick, you can help them efficiently. Take a break. We come back. Let's talk about what those documents are and what the tools are. We'll be back after the break. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. We were just spinning. We just didn't know what was going to happen next. At Samasco Law, we deal with these issues every day, especially elder law. Pat went to work for Fran. Patrick was there holding my hand, kept saying, we'll get through this, we'll get through this. He got her husband Medicaid and in a nursing home. Samasco Law got the success they deserved. Samasco Law is definitely family to me. I really appreciate knowing all of you. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. 
It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Favgro specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, we're back. So when we're talking about what are the basic documents and elements of an estate plan? Brian, well, Jim, the will. Yeah. A trust, a patient advocate, and a durable power of attorney. Those are the Basic four elements. Which ones deal with life and which ones deal with death? It's the patient advocate and the power of attorney, which I consider living probate. That takes care of you while you're alive and you can't handle your assets or you can't do your banking or you can't make your medical decisions. The will and the trust is more so after you pass, getting your assets to your beneficiaries in a smooth and efficient, tax efficient manner. And then the, the trust accomplishes avoiding probate in that process? Absolutely. As opposed to the will. Abs a will is a sure trip to the probate court. Yeah. The durable power is one where, you know, I, I remember with my, my father, I had his durable power of attorney. He was up there in his age. He still had his faculties together, but he wasn't sharp and he didn't have the stamina to deal with things. So by having the durable power, I could do his banking if, he, if it needed to be done. I could deal with Comcast who kept charging him for Cinemax every month when he didn't even know what Cinemax was. My dear friends at Comcast, every month that would show up on the bill. There was a class action there, but I never did pursue it. You know, so, something was going on <laughs> with how, how that got on the bill every month. So, so you know, what I was gonna say is, is that a lot of times people will call and say, well, can't I just get one online? Can I get a will? Can I get a power of attorney online? And I want to warn people that the stuff that you're looking at online is mostly garbage. It doesn't do what you need it to do. It doesn't have the protections that you need them to have, including having proper Medicaid planning ability in your power of attorney, which is becoming more and more important. Well, let me give you an example on that. If I had a site that said how to do a will or a trust online that was written by me and had all the forms and everything else, I could say to a client or a friend, go to my site and do it because I know what I'm doing and they would know that I, what I'm doing. But just going into the internet, jumping into Google, Grabbing onto a link, I got a form. and then All the it forms says, online, I got a form. "Do this." <laughs> you know, people think that that means it's it, it's right. It's anything can be on there. You have free access to all of the garbage in the world by going through the internet. The, the problem is every situation is a little bit different. A, a power of attorney for you may be different than the power of attorney for Brian. For sure, you know, it's everything's you. case specific. Like, yeah, you sometimes could have you want to authorize your agent to have greater authority, sometimes less authority, depending on who the agent is. Maybe you want to have somebody be able to operate a business. Maybe you want to just restrict them to being able to do things like real estate transactions or banking. It, there's, there's broad powers, there's limited powers, and knowing what your client needs is, is, a, is really essential. I do know from a Medicaid planning standpoint, there it's important to give very broad powers. In, Absolutely, in including gifting powers, including powers to initiate lawsuits if that needs to be But you gotta happen. be very selective of who your attorney is in that case. And Absolutely. You gotta be careful. And you have to be selective who you appoint, too. Yeah. You know, you just don't pick the yeah, oldest Yeah, that's right, kid. I've been yeah. the attorney in fact, yeah. Yes. So let's kind of let's tie this back to debt issues a bit. So okay. let, let's just say estate planning, coordinating with debt issues. Suppose one spouse has financial issues, but the other spouse does not. How does that play into the 
estate planning issues? Well, you don't necessarily want the one spouse who's financially responsible to leave all of their money and assets outright to the spouse who has debt. You want your spouse who has debt so, to have access and so be able to So make sure that money. the spouse with debt dies first. Well, if we Is that the solution? Well, it could be, but that's not necessarily where we're going here. No, what you want to do is have the one spouse who's got the assets and doesn't want to pay the bills of their other spouse to put them to put his or her assets into a spendthrift trust with discretionary powers to the trustee. So to try and translate that, so the spouse that is financially responsible and has the assets le dies, <laughs> leaving those assets in trust for the benefit of their, their other spouse who they love and they care for, but that other spouse has debt. So you don't want to just leave the money outright, because if you leave the money outright, the creditors can grab the money. In fact, in fact, so you by, make it a discretionary trust that says you only give them the money that they need. Who's the trustee then? The trustee is not the spouse. It's somebody else. Who has, therefore, there's no control by the spouse who's inheriting the asset so you can make asset. it a kid? Uh, the good kid. You can make right. it the good kid, the accountant, the attorney, whoever you trust, because you want to make sure they do the right thing. And they protect the spouse. And, and, and the beauty of that is that, let's say spouse with debt inherits, would, would have gotten a million dollars from their deceased uh, partner spouse. Be, being in a trust still, and with that discretionary provision, the spouse with the debt still has the right to file bankruptcy if they otherwise qualify. Because of the spendthrift provision? Yeah, because a trustee can't get to the money. But Nobody but can get so, to the money. So what happens to the money when it's left if you're not, if you're not giving it to the spouse? There's a residual beneficiary. So it's, it's, it's who gets it? The, the money's for the... the, the for the, the kids? Yeah, yeah for sure. the kids. It's for the disabled spouse or the spouse that needs it, but that upon the death, that there's an alternative beneficiary contingent beneficiary right, so what goes you, to them. What if, you, what if the kids also have financial problems? You, or you're worried yeah. about the kids getting divorced but, and the, and, and the uh, you, other you, spouse taking all the money? With the trust, you can control the assets from the grave and you could put provisions to protect them too. Including a spendthrift provision to so keep the, So their, if the kid has financial bills. problems or an unstable marriage or things like that, you can take those steps that way. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? But if you don't do it, you know, you, you know what happens? It all gets probated. It just gets delivered where the state says it's supposed to go, and that's it. My favorite one, as you always say, is there's a hundred thousand dollars, and the eighteen-year-old inherits it. What's he do with the money? He's going to buy a Corvette. Oh, what yeah. if? We come back for the break. I want to know what if it's not a he and it's a she. We'll be back after the break. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us for Law & Reality Live on the Praise Network, Tuesdays 10 o'clock a.m. and Saturdays 7 o'clock a.m. and on KISS 105.9, Sunday 7 o'clock a.m. We have a live seminar coming up. Our next one is on Wednesday, September 28, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Do your estate plan before it's too late. 
We're going to go over the elements of an estate plan, how to avoid probate, key planning points you need to know. Attendees receive a gold certificate for $300 off the cost of an estate plan. Sign up at thamgross.com, lawandreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. The cost of the seminar is free. It's a great opportunity to put that estate plan in place that you need to do. Take advantage of it. Call. Be sure and sign up. Seminars fill up fast. We're going to remind you, you can always come in at Thav Gross for a free consultation. We do them via teleconference, in office, anytime you want to do it, whatever is your comfort zone. We're happy to accommodate you, giving that we're kind of coming out of COVID, but people are still have still have some concerns. Just call 888-235-HELP or go online to sign up for a free consult. Debt issues, tax issues, estate planning issues, business issues, elder law issues with Pat, disability issues with uh, Jeff Kirshner. Again, sign up at wanreality.com or thavgross.com or call 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Also, check out our website for free reports, Resolving Tax Problems, The Real Solutions by myself and Jeff Linden. Bankruptcy Is It Right For Me by Brian Small, How to Save Your Home from Foreclosure, Business Formation Loans and Grants for Small Businesses in Detroit and Michigan, The Retiree's Guide to Social Security from Pat Samasco. I want to thank our sponsors, Dav Gross, Samasco Law, Kirshner Law. Now back to the show. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. I was married for 57 years before my husband died. Samasco Law had established a trust for them before this happened. There's so much to do in the beginning, but after about a month, you're kind of alone. We deal with estate planning and trusts every day. If you continue to have good support and know that your finances and your estate is in order, that's one thing that's so comforting. I would just highly recommend Samasco Law. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, we're back. So. Jim, do you see issues with other attorneys and other powers of attorney out there that are done in a way that interfere with Medicaid planning? Absolutely. In Medicaid planning, uh, a lot of times you have to give money away. The person going into the nursing home has to have zero assets, and there has to be a tools in place to allow the attorney, in fact, to, to divest the person going into the nursing home of their assets. And you want to give that money really to the children, which are oftentimes the attorney, in fact, the person who's the agent. Absolutely. And a lot of power of attorneys restrict that ability to give outright gifts. What we want to do is divest the person going into the nursing home of all their assets so they are qualified for Medicaid. And if so they're not competent, then you need the power of attorney to uh, effectuate that. So if the attorney who's doing the estate plan is not thinking about the issue of Medicaid planning, oftentimes those durable powers of attorney will restrict that because in, 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 in the sense of if you're not thinking about the Medicaid planning, you don't want the person who's designated as the agent to take the money for themselves. So you're worried about that when you're drafting. It's not that the attorneys are dumb or that they're doing something uh, wrong. It's that they're not thinking about the Medicaid possibility. But medic nursing home care is how much per month? Nine, ten thousand dollars a month. And they live in what's the average stay? Uh, about thirty-six months. So it's big dollars. You know, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars are at stake if you don't do Medicaid planning instead of the government paying for it, it comes out of depleting the estate for, you know, for the re other spouse who's still living. That's a now, big issue. Now, what one, about one, one key note I want to make sure everybody realizes, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the Medicaid planning can be done at the last minute. 
but if you don't have the link before you go into the nursing home, but if you don't have the right language in the power of attorney, you could be really stuck. A absolutely correct. And, and in the last minute, a lot of times the person going in the nursing home may not be competent and they won't have the authority to issue a power of attorney. So you at can't that revise point. it at that point either. Right. So what about in the business setting? Um, one, how to protect business assets when one spouse has serious financial issues? Well, there's there's a lot of you, you're talking about one one We're doing spouse this, being insolvent and one spouse being solvent. Yeah, and they have a business. So you could deal with transfer on death issues with LLCs. There, there's a number of different ways. What is that? Was this like a secret little uh, secret recipe well, that you're telling me about, but you don't want yeah. anyone else out there to know? So so in in Michigan, share share. Well, sometimes we do foreign LLCs that have transfer and death provisions, uh, like the state of Ohio. So by transfer and death, it means immediately upon your death, the interest in the company, the LLC interest, passes to the beneficiary, the, the third party, without going through probate by operation of law. Correct. But it depends on the state that the LLC is formed oh, Ohio in. Ohio allows that. I believe Ohio does it. I think uh, Minnesota and uh, Nevada. Michigan doesn't uh, say what. Michigan's position I don't know. on it is we don't know because there's no law on it in Michigan and there's no statute that authorizes right. there's it. Other, these other states have statutes that authorize it. So when you're talking about protecting assets in the form of a business, sometimes it makes sense to go look at outside the box. And that's what we do. We look outside the box to find a solution to make sure that the asset goes from point A to point B without being grabbed by the creditors. Another, another, another got it. And then another one that we do that people need to consider is, suppose one spouse is doing all right and has assets, the other one doesn't, and they're in a business. So one spouse has $100,000 of credit card debt, but the other spouse is not obligated on it. If there are assets that they have held by the spouse that's financially solvent, we can use that money to settle and resolve the credit card debt doing debt resolution. Right, debt resolution is a, is, a, and is a simple way to get rid of some of the debt or all of the debt depending on the type. So there are strategies and, and the point is that when you're doing estate plans, when you're analyzing um, business problems and financial issues, what is owned by the husband, what is owned by the wife, who's obligated on what, who has the problem and who doesn't. We need to take into account all of those factors to develop the plan that accomplishes the goal. The goal is preserve the assets for you and your family, both while living and then upon death. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.